In the previous lecture, we left off with a question of when should you use a virtual machine or Docker containers? If you recall in that lecture, I did go over one example of when you should use a VM. For example, if you had your own physical servers and were starting a web hosting company, it would be in your best interest to use virtual machines to separate each customer. Another good spot to use a virtual machine is when you need to perform tests in an environment that matches your production server. Let's say that you decided to run all of your production servers on a specific distribution of Linux called Ubuntu. Let's also say that you hopped on board with Docker and are using it for your web application. You broke things up into three Docker containers and it's awesome. Great job, by the way. But now let's say that you wanted to test something that's outside the scope of Docker, but is still very important for your application to work. One example of this would be testing a firewall configuration for Ubuntu 16. Chances are your development box is running Mac OS or Windows, not Ubuntu 16. Even if you were running Ubuntu, you wouldn't want to mess around with your personal development box's firewall just to test one of many applications. My point is, the firewall configuration is something you're doing on the host OS, not inside of Docker. So Docker will not help you test that. This diagram actually makes no sense because how could you test something on a host running Ubuntu when you're running Mac OS or Windows? The answer is to combine both virtual machines and Docker. In this case, we play to the strengths of what a virtual machine provides. We use it to spin up a guest operating system that matches our production environment, and then we run Docker inside of it. On the real production server, there would be no need to use the virtual machine because it's already running Ubuntu 16. This is mainly used for doing localized testing where you can use a tool like Vagrant to spin up an Ubuntu 16 virtual machine on your development box. So that's two real examples of when you'll want to use virtual machines, and that leads us to when you should use Docker containers. If you're trying to run a single process or a service in isolation, then Docker containers are a great fit. A very common use case would be each component of a web application. If you decide to finish this course, you'll see exactly how to do this with tons of different examples. It's also worth noting that Docker is not limited to just web apps. You can run almost any process you want inside of Docker. For example, if you're running Mac OS or Windows and you happen to stumble upon a very useful Linux tool that you wish you could run, then with the aid of Docker, you could actually wrap that tool up using Docker and run it on Mac OS or Windows. In a weird way, you can almost think of Docker as a package manager for entire applications. It's actually much more than that, but it's a decent metaphor for now. So to sum things up, use virtual machines to isolate or test entire systems and use Docker to isolate and deliver applications. Now let's tackle the question of whether or not virtual machines and Docker are compatible. It's probably no surprise to you by now that they are very compatible. Remember this slide from a few minutes ago? It demonstrated running Docker inside of a virtual machine. In fact, most cloud hosting providers such as DigitalOcean or Amazon AWS give you certain servers with set hardware specs for a price, but they are not giving you a dedicated machine. Instead, they are setting up a virtual machine with specific hardware constraints that match up with the plan you signed up for. You're very likely sharing a single physical server with dozens or even hundreds of other customers. Everyone is isolated in their own virtual machine. This is what allows you to scale so quickly on cloud providers. It's only a matter of minutes to go from nothing to a fleet of servers available to be used. With that said, you can also run Docker on bare metal hardware as long as the host OS is supported by Docker. And at this point, most major distributions of Linux are supported. This is actually a huge benefit of Docker. You can build your applications with Docker and have them deployed on Amazon AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, DigitalOcean, any other major cloud provider, dedicated hardware at a data center, or even your laptop. It's all the same from Docker's point of view, even if the underlying host OS is different across environments. In the end, with Docker, you have a tremendous amount of freedom and flexibility. You can pick the infrastructure that suits your application's requirements the best, and at the end of the day, that's an important thing 
because our application requirements tend to change at rapid rates in very unexpected ways. Now let's wrap up this section by going over how the Docker daemon works under the hood. See you there.